compete. You see Lester Cotton Sr. had the most snaps, 44. It's, it's closer to the name of his position. You can see that right there, 44 snaps. Meaning, Coach staff just wanted to see, is this our guy? Will this guy play a large amount of time? And now they have plenty of film on him, including the PFF, and a lot of these people's on these stats. He did really live up to expectations. He even saw Chris Collinsworth bringing him up. You know, so Chris Collinsworth is always the best. probably going to start. Let's just be real. That's how, that's how, this, that's how this media trade works. In terms of the defensive line, who got the most pressures? Who generated the most pressures while they're on the field? You see Deshaun Bauer, former New England Patriots, 29 snaps, had four pressures, led the team in pressures despite the fact that he had 29 snaps. You have people like Jerry Green who had 36 snaps, a lot more than Deshaun Bauer. Neil Farrell Jr. had 34 snaps as well, and then Darian Bowler was able to get a couple pressures. That's what I like to see in this game. Was our linebackers blitzing? We did more we blitzes than I'm used to because I'm so used to Gus Bradley last year. But we never blitzed. We never blitzed at all. And Butler got two pressures despite the fact that, in my opinion, we'll talk. I mean, he, he had a rough game. He, he had a rough game. Kendall Biggers didn't play much. Neither did Vernon Bernard and Butler. Just 19 snaps, 16 snaps here and there. Maybe Vernon Butler is a little higher in the depth chart. That's why you don't want to play him that much. That could be a possibility, but. Only one pressure right here that we can see on the day for the Bears as well. So not because also had three pressures right behind Sean Bauer next to the girl that had a really good defensive grade. And you can play these about 29 snaps and that's good enough there for not because. Either way, receivers, this is something that I think we need to talk about. We focus a lot on the running backs. We talk about the running backs and the extensively. Check out my video, what's happening to the Raiders running back room. Um, but what I want to say here is, you know, who, who got the lion's share of targets? It was obviously Tyron Johnson. Disappointing to see that drop. The thing that he did is he beat this up. You can saw that Jared said him, I think, put it on the money right in front of him, and he dropped. He did drop it. It would have been probably a touchdown, maybe at the point of the line for Tyron Johnson. However, I do like the fact that he was up. I do think the point he gets press, maybe he can targets in training camp on a daily basis. I do think he can get over this drop thing, and we do need somebody like him with that speed. We can get over all the like that. Very impressive stuff, to be honest. Like that. that is the hardest thing for a lot of receivers. Actually, just getting open. Actually, so, I still was impressed. You see that 27 feet drop rate, but it's like the four minutes that. And Zemir White had four targets as well. Long with Jordan Beasy, the, the third day guy who was a wide receiver participant in Kaepernick's workout. Jordan had more targets when he played towards the end of the game with Carter. So, not high on the depth chart, obviously. Keep the ball up the game early, and then this is who had the most targets by the Everybody under these players had a lot of targets. So, Josh Jacobs, I mean, he was one of the top 10 players who had the most targets uh, in this game, which is really interesting for preseason. It's just something you, you, can't, you can't ignore that. Snaps on defense and played the most on defense. Chris Jones, we talked about him, had the drop interception. Did really well, look at that coverage grade, 83.7 highest on the defense for the Raiders against the Raiders. And he had two pass breakups. We let him pass breakups, let him, uh, I think generally just allowing the, the fewest amount of yards with his targets. Two targets, allowing zero yards. Chris is still Chris Jones, man. I mean, perhaps he can see himself on this roster. Excel in that way, and Bryce Cosby, the safety transitioned to slot cornerback, and we know Patrick Graham likes to have safeties at uh, slot corner. Bryce uh, Cosby from Ball State, I think, did really well uh, in terms of just the physicality that he brought to the slot position. Now he did give up some receptions here and there, but I, I mean, I thought it was impressive, especially playing that many snaps. And we talked about Masterson. Darian Butler with the three missed tackles. That's why you see that tackle grade at 29.1 for Darian Butler, number four on the list here. Some rough stuff. He's going to really need to turn it around. I thought he was a shoe in to make this roster, and there's a lot of hype for him. You know, having that connection there, running with the ones in mini camp, and then a little bit in training camp, and now that's sort of dwindling away. To be to be completely honest, so these guys all played the most. Take it with a grain of salt. Probably means they're 
a little lower on the depth chart, to be honest. You saw sort of a different strategy for the offense. You saw a lot of people who you might actually be able to see play in the future play the most on offense. But on defense, it was a little bit of the reverse. The people who played the most are people that you don't know. You know, some of them probably aren't even going to for sure make the roster, just to be completely blunt. Aside from the rookies who you have on a really good contract, like Matthew Butler and Neil Farrell Jr. right here. Now, people who played the least, just to back up what I just said. People who played the least are on defense. Sorry if you heard that. My cat knocked over a water bottle. But Andrew Billings is somebody who seems like a starter now. With the long angles, Jonathan Hagen struggling with the back. physically unable to perform this. I think Andrew Billings is a, you know, is, is might be one of the guys or the guy, you know, for seven total snaps. Appearance of hype about him. He started out the game in the very first quarter. It seems like all Nichols and Hankins are ready to go. He's for sure going to be the starter for this team at the event. Didn't play that much along with Jayon Brown, Abram, and Divine Diablo. I think there's a competition right now between Diablo and Jayon Brown for that linebacker spot when you're on when you are in the sub defense. However, when we are in our base defense, I think you'll see both of them on the field. Nate Hobbs also played outside primarily. You didn't you didn't see him in the spot at all. He was from that ten snaps long trip with Mary. And Kyle Kuno, we saw him in a decent amount early on in the game. Somebody who probably has risen in the depth chart. Look at and 
saw where he did to Gap Reds, and Josh Daniels does have access to all that film, so I don't think there's any confusion there. Yes, teams tend to run a certain scheme a higher percentage of the time, but they still do the other stuff. So they still do Gap Reds, even though if they are primarily a zone scheme, you still see a percentage of those there. And you saw that last night. You saw us, even though we were primary, not last night, but we you saw us most of the time to Gap So, yes, I do think in Josh McDaniel's view, he, he is evaluating Josh Jacobs. And in a certain sense, since the jury is still out with the way that he's looking at this. I think the jury is still out for him. He's making a decision about it. He didn't play Brandon Bolden. People keep saying, oh, every running back played. And even Josh McDaniels said that at the press conference. He said, I think every back played. And he didn't play Brandon Bolden because he knows how he feels about Brandon Bolden. And look, when I say that Brandon Bolden is the number one back on the team, I, I, mean, I, I mean in Josh McDaniels' eyes. He is number one in job security. And he will be on the field a lot more than Raiders fans think. Brandon Bolden had his highest amount of snaps in his entire career last year, around 390. And let me tell you guys something. Almost all of them, besides like 50, were on passing downs. And the Raiders are going to pass a majority of the to of time. You know, all NFL teams pass about like 67% compared to 37% runs. I think it's going to be even a higher percentage of passing with the Raiders this year because we have so many weapons. We got the you know Adams, Waller, Moreau, you know Re Renfro. You can you can go on and on, right? And you got Derek Carr. So I think we are going to see. You know, not the New England offense you've seen over the past three years. I think it's going to be more pass heavy because, quite frankly, New England hasn't had the receiving core in the past three years to even be pass heavy, even with Tom Brady. So, Brandon Bolden, I think, is going to be on the field a lot because we are going to be passing a lot. I think every single time that we that it's an obvious passing situation, even when it's not, because we are, I think Brandon Bolden is going to be on the field. But I, I will predict that he probably will only have, you know, 50 attempts, similar to New England. Because New England's running back group last year. Let me just break this down for you uh, as, as we conclude this video. New England had Sony Michelle play in the preseason, and they eventually traded him away. Uh, away. And he was in the last year of his contract, fifth-year option decline, traded 